So in this video, we're going to look at the uh, constant acceleration particle model. Um, in subsequent videos, I'll do some examples where we apply it. Um, but the first thing we probably want to do is just identify what we mean by a model. And so in general, a model is a, it's just a representation, a simplified representation usually of something in the real world representation of real world phenomena or objects or whatever. We're going to be doing phenomena. And so what, what we do in, in physics is we can take, we can take some real world thing, you know, so re real world phenom. So we look at this and we're like, okay, so what's going on and how can we, how can we characterize it? Like what's the, what are, what are some of the things that, that, that make it special? Um, and we want it to be very particular. So this is a, a like some common situation. And then, um, then we make some assumptions about it. So like in our case, we would say, well, you know, something moving with constant acceleration, but it doesn't matter, but we're going to make some assumptions. And we'll talk about that when I get to the actual model. And so out of the assumptions, then we build a model. We build a representation of that um, phenomena. Now this model um, includes lots of different things. You know, we could have, well, we could just describe it in words. Um, we could use pictures and diagrams. And diagrams would be like the motion diagrams that we did in the last video. Um, we can use graphs. That's what we did last week and we did earlier. We did some qualitative graphing. Um, we have equations. That's what we're going to do today and et cetera. I mean, there's other stuff that can go into it depending upon the model. And so once we build the model, you know, then we can, we, we look at it and we're like, okay, well that models this phenomena that we're talking about, but is it a good model? And so to do that, we test it. So we actually do some experiments with it. And so we're going to test it. So we go to the lab and we're like, okay, let's, let's look at things that have like <clears throat> for, for again. So if we were doing constant acceleration, we would then test it. And we're like, okay, here's an object. I know it has constant acceleration. And then I'm going to gather all this data and does it match my model? And if it does, then, okay, that's good. But then we need to test it over and over and over again. And eventually we might find that it fails. And so we might have to refine the model. So we'll go through some uh, re refine it, and then that would produce a new model. And then once we have that model, then we have to test it and we refine it. And so we go through this cycle. Okay. So this is the modeling cycle, but it all comes out of this real world phenomena. And that's what that's you know what we always want to like tie it back to. Um, so some of the, some of the models that we talk about. Uh, we're not going to be able to actually re refine it. Um, like for instance, when we look at projectile motion, um, we're going to ignore air resistance and that's because the mathematics to deal with it, we don't have. So you may know that it has to be refined, but we're not necessarily going to go through that process. We'll just always have the same assumption. We're going to ignore air resistance and then we can apply our model. Okay. So, um, our first model that we're going to look at or, or what, kinematics is focused on is this constant acceleration model. And so I'm going to go through and we can build that. So the, the constant acceleration model, I'm just going to say constant acceleration. Okay. So for this model, we have to make a couple of assumptions. So let's just, let's just, let me draw. I think I was using the car last time. So we have some car and it's getting faster or slower. It's just accelerating. So I'll just say it's getting faster. So it's moving this way with some velocity. And then we have, uh, we also have an acceleration in this, in this direction. So we know that the velocity is growing. So we get a bigger velocity over here. That would be my final velocity and my initial velocity. Okay. So a couple things, um, that we have to assume one is going to be, uh, one constant acceleration. <laughs> that seems pretty obvious but uh, we have to state it that it's moving at a constant acceleration. Now, this is a simplification because things rarely move at a constant acceleration. Um, however, if we just 
say, you know what, it's constant acceleration. And we do that because then over this time period, the average acceleration is the same as the instantaneous acceleration because the instantaneous you can't, we can't deal with, with algebra. Um, so we would, we do a constant acceleration just so that we can say the average acceleration and we can use our definition. Everything's good. Um, and then the second thing is going to be, um, that the object doesn't matter. The object doesn't matter. In other words, if it's a, um, car or a truck or a train or a runner or a cheetah, or I don't care, it doesn't matter. Um, we don't care about the size or the shape. So we can say that the size or shape, it doesn't matter. Now that, that has implications, um, like air resistance and stuff like that. That's why we just ignore it. We're like, we don't care. Um, hence we treat it as a particle. So we say the constant acceleration particle model. Particle means that we're just ignoring it. It's, this is, means it's some object. That's why when we draw the motion diagram, we can just do circles and that's fine. Um, so those are our two things. So constant acceleration and the um, object doesn't matter. Now keep in mind, constant acceleration, that includes both cases. It, it includes when, um, let me get that back to yellow. It includes when the acceleration is, is not equal to zero. Like that's true, that's constant acceleration. So it's like three or negative seven, but it also includes when acceleration is equal to zero. That's a special case, this one. That's a special case. If the acceleration is zero, it's still constant. It's still constantly zero, but this becomes another model called constant velocity. And I'll probably talk about that in a different video. So this is a special case of constant acceleration. This is our general model. Okay. So, um, so we have this picture here. So this could be part of our model. We could draw a picture of it showing the velocity and the acceleration vectors. Um, we could also then take that and make a, you know, a motion diagram, which we did before. So we have some velocity and it's growing something like that. And then, uh, so these would be velocities. Remember those are little arrows to indicate vectors. Um, and then we also have acceleration in this case. So it's like this. And now you can see why in the last video I explained like these accelerations are the same size because it's constant and it's not changing. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that we can't have a phase where the motion changes, but for this piece of motion, this acceleration is the same. And if it changes, it's going to be the same motion for a period of time. Okay. So now we have a motion diagram. Um, when we did graphs, so we can draw some graphs for this. So um, we have three of them. We have position versus time, velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. So position versus time, acceleration versus or velocity versus time, and acceleration versus time. So these three, if the acceleration is not equal to zero, so we have some non-zero acceleration. Then this graph here is always quadratic. So we could draw it like this. It might be curved down. It might go like this, but the key is it's quadratic of some sort. Oops, quad quadratic. And then um, because the, like if I look at little slopes, remember the slope of this graph tells me the velocity. I can see that the little slopes are increasing because it's getting faster and faster and faster. So we get this one. So we get a line here. And if the acceleration is not zero, it's always going to be a line. It's going to be linear. Now it could go up, it could go down. It doesn't matter. Okay. So don't think that it's always, these graphs always look like this. It's just that they have the general form, quadratic, linear. And then if it's, if it's constant, then this one is just a horizontal line. So this is a constant graph. So that's when the acceleration is not zero. I'll talk about when it is here in a bit. Um, okay. So now we have graphs. So we know what the graphs look like. Um, so now we're going to add in equations. And so for this one, <clears throat> we have, um, X in terms of T. So we want to know the position in terms of time. And so the, the equation for that is your, your final position 
is equal to the initial position, wherever you start, plus the initial velocity times time, plus one half of the acceleration times time squared. So now you can see our variables. This is a function of x in terms of t. So those are our variables. This, these right here are constants. These are numbers. So we need to figure out what's, what's the initial position, what's the initial velocity, what's the acceleration, and then we'll have a quadratic, which will give us this bending on it. So this is the position function, position as a function of time. Um, now the subscript f, that means the final position, and the little knots mean initial, where did it start? What we normally will do is we just we just don't write that f. We leave that off. And so you'll see it a lot of times, and especially when I'm doing examples, I'll just write x. Oops. So this is just x. Just know that's final position. And this is initial. All right. Um, so there's derivations in your book. Uh, you can go and look at that of where these equations come from. But that one shows this one's quadratic. For the velocity graph, so if I want to know velocity with respect to time, uh, the velocity, the final velocity, is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. And again, you can see that the a and the v, um, those are going to be constants, so our only variable is t. This is a linear function. And the slope on this graph is a, is the acceleration. And we already kind of know that because we went over it about graphs, but we can see it in the equation as well. There's no equation for this one because it's constant. So this one would just be a equals whatever this is, three or something. So there's no equation for this. But there is one other equation that we can use, and that's when we don't know the time. We don't know any information about time. So if there's no time. It doesn't mean that there's no time. We don't know time. How about that? Uh, we don't know time. Then we can use this equation. And it says that the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in position, so x minus x naught. So we can use this one. Notice there's no t, so this one comes in handy. Now essentially, um, this is our model. So that's the model for constant acceleration. We get different kinds of information. We're not, not different kinds. We can get the same information from all of these. Um, it's just which is mo most beneficial. So we should be able to look at a graph and describe the motion, or we can look at the equation and describe the motion. Um, but um, it's all useful, and we're going to be using it over and over again. So what we'll do initially is whenever we see a scenario, we'll, we'll kind of sketch it all. We'll, we'll do all of this, and then we can start answering questions. Um, I, okay, so this is constant acceleration, acceleration not equal to zero. I want to show you uh, when acceleration is zero, since we're at, this video is at 13 minutes, so we have time. So if the acceleration is zero, that's a different, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a, a child of this big model. So if the acceleration is zero, what that means is that it's constant velocity. Okay, so we still, we're going to start with the same, the three graphs, and then we'll look at the equations. Um, so I'm going to move down just a little bit and give myself some room. If I have room, I don't. So we'll have um, our position graph, our velocity graph, and the acceleration. Okay, so for constant velocity, for constant velocity, if the acceleration is zero, the position graph is a line. And the velocity graph is constant. And the reason for that is because the acceleration is zero. So it's constant still, but it's zero. So these three graphs, again, this one can go up or down. This one might be up here, or might be down here. But this one's, this one's linear, this one's constant, and this one is zero. And so our equations change. We still use the same equation. So for the position function, we get x, x naught plus v uh, t plus one half at squared 
But you might be saying, well, this is a square. How come it's a line? And it's because the acceleration is zero. Since the acceleration is zero, that would be zero, which means that this whole term goes away. So for constant acceleration, we just have this part. I mean, I'm sorry, constant velocity. So you can see it is linear because we lose this term, the quadratic term. So now we have a line. And there's, there's nothing for this one because it's just b equals whatever, this one as well, a equals zero. So it's really just that first one that changes. Um, because like this one, okay, so I guess we could do it here. For this one, the velocity function is v naught plus a t. But what happens? Well, this is zero, so we get v equals v naught. That means that the velocity doesn't change. It's always equal to whatever the initial velocity is. Okay. Um, likewise, this last one wouldn't really work because the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared because all of this cancels because there's no acceleration. Okay, so those are your two models. Uh, the next videos will just be some examples of them.